Hi, everybody. We're going to get started now. Um, thanks for coming to our talk. Um, my name is Angela. I'm a software engineer at Pivotal. And I'm Christian, uh, another software engineer at Pivotal, uh, uh, currently working on the infrastructure team that works on Bubble. Yeah. And today we'll be talking to you about deploying Cloud Foundry using uh, Bosch Bootloader, which we call Bubble for short, Bosch 2.0, and CF deployment, so a set of new tools and features that core Cloud Foundry teams have been working on in the past year. Um, but before we get into what all these tools are, I just want to take a quick temperature of the room. So who here has used Bosch Bootloader before? Okay. Awesome. How many of you have used Bosch? Great. Used Bosch 2.0. Deployed CF, probably, probably pretty important, using CF release. And how about using CF deployment? Okay, right. so it seems like most people have used one tool or another. Um, there seems to be a pretty even distribution. Um, hopefully by the end of the talk though, no matter where you started on having used these tools before or heard about them, you'll be equipped to go from nothing to deploying a fully working Cloud Foundry in a matter of a couple of hours. Uh, great, so just to start, I'd like to, you know, what, what does it mean to deploy Cloud Foundry? Um, it essentially means deploying whatever's in this diagram, uh, which, you know, you don't care about because you have Bosch, right? Cool. Um, so Bosch handles all this for you, which it looked like most of you use Bosch. Um, so you know that you give it a deployment manifest, which details all the VMs, the software, all the configuration, uh, and then out comes the Cloud Foundry. Um, but usually there's a couple hiccups uh, that people encounter to even get to this point where they could do a Bosch deploy and get a Cloud Foundry. Uh, the first of which is you have to put all this um, like infrastructure somewhere or VMs somewhere. Uh, so you need some underlying infrastructure. Uh, which this simplified diagram kind of shows um, what you kind of need. So you essentially need a network um, which has a couple subnets, one for your Bosch, which you usually put in a, a public one so you can talk to it from your computer, uh, and then have an internal subnet which you could use to deploy CF, uh, and you let Bosch know that it could deploy VMs into it. And then you usually create some load balancers uh, for your Cloud Foundry, um, so that you could, uh, you know, route traffic to your apps um, through like the router, um, which, you know, goes into your apps uh, that are in your cells. And if you can figure out how to do this, the second uh, hiccup that people usually encounter is um, you have to tell Bosch about all this infrastructure that you've created. And you usually do that through YAML. Um, so as most of you know, through like CF release or Bosch 1.0, um, there's a lot of cloud properties that you have to fill in, which are like your networks, your subnets, uh, security groups, um, CIDR ranges, any IPs. Uh, so that's a lot of work, which you do, usually don't want to deal with when you're, all you're trying to do is deploy Cloud Foundry. Um, I think most of you know what this looks like, but this is a deployment manifest. Um, as you know, there's uh, jobs, which are your VMs, and they usually have some amount of uh, software on it, which are your uh, job templates, and then, uh, you know, some amount of configuration. Yeah, so as Christian shown us, deploying Cloud Foundry can be a really arduous task. And so our motivation here is really to streamline the process and simplify how you deploy CF. So for the past year, core Cloud Foundry teams have been working on creating tools that simplify a setup for Cloud Foundry. Um, and so just a brief overview of each of these tools. The first tool is Bosch Bootloader, which we call Bubble for short. And it will take you from essentially nothing to having not only a Bosch director, but the underlying infrastructure necessary to deploy your Cloud Foundry. So in the diagram that Christian showed, um, it will give you your network, it will give you your subnets, it will give you that underlying CF infrastructure that you need. Under the hood, um, 
Bubble is utilizing a lot of the new features from Bosch 2.0. So for example, in Bubble, we're using Bosch deployment to stand up your Bosch director. Um, and Bosch 2.0 is also incorporated um, with the third tool, CF deployment, which is the repository that houses the new base manifest for deploying a Cloud Foundry. And by using these tools, you're now able to deploy CF in a way that's automatable, repeatable, and reproducible. And the power in these tools isn't just that each of these solves a specific problem in the process of deploying Cloud Foundry. The real value is that they each are solving a specific problem in the process of deploying CF with the end goal of having a Cloud Foundry up and running. Um, so for example, while Bubble does solve the immediate problem of giving you a Bosch director, it's giving you that Bosch director with the end goal of utilizing it to have a CF up and running. Um, and so one way this really manifests is you can see that we make sure that these tools are highly compatible and integrated with one another. So we have pipelines running that will use Bubble to deploy a Bosch director and then use CF deployment to deploy your Cloud Foundry. And so this way, if there's ever a change to Bubble that would break its compatibility to CF deployment or vice versa, we're able to catch those quickly and make sure that it never gets to the end user who might be wanting to use these tools in conjunction with one another. So by using these tools, you can go from nothing to a fully running Cloud Foundry in a matter of a couple of hours, where most of that's just waiting for your Cloud Foundry to deploy. Um, so that's a brief overview, but you might be curious about how you utilize each of these tools and the additional features that each provide. Great. Um, so here we have a concourse pipeline which kind of walks you through um, our process for doing all this. Uh, so it's a little hard to read, but the first box says bubble up, which will um, basically create that infrastructure and uh, deploy your Bosch director. The second box is um, deploying CF, which can take that bubble environment and just uh, deploy a CF uh, in it using CF deployment, uh, and then deploying an app or running tests or whatever you need to do. So I'm gonna dive a little deeper into uh, Bubble, the first box. So again, it deploys all your CF infrastructure for you. Um, so your network, subnets, uh, load balancers, anything you need for Cloud Foundry, Bubble will give you. And then it'll deploy your Bosch director using Bosch deployment. Um, so in the end, you'll end up with something like this. Um, and another nice feature of Bubble is that it's item potent which means if you run bubble up again and again, uh, you'll end up with the same end result, which is great for CI. Um, it's also great when you can download the, the latest bubble, uh, do a bubble up and get any latest uh, patches that we've created. And currently we just support AWS and GCP, um, but there are talks of supporting more IaaS in the future. Cool, so now that you've you know, bubbled up, you might want to actually target your Bosch director. Um, Bubble actually gives you some helpful uh, functions to help you do this. So the first of which is Bubble Prints Env, which will essentially print out uh, the environment variables you need for the, the new Bosch CLI. Um, so you can eval or source this and you uh, essentially have an environment ready to, to use the Bosch CLI. The second thing that Bubble gives you is a cloud config, which if you haven't heard of this before, it's essentially an IaaS specific manifest that contains um, all the information about your, your IaaS and also your, your network infrastructure. Um, and we essentially abstracted all this out from the deployment manifest so uh, we could keep that fairly static. Um, which looks something like this, although a little bit more filled out. Um, which also makes it well integrated with CF deployment, as CF deployment um, assumes a lot of the things that Bubble gives you are in the cloud config. And if you're kind of wondering um, what these commands look like, it's essentially just bubble up um, and bubble create LBs type CF, uh, and you'll essentially have uh, a Bosch director ready for you to deploy CF. 
Awesome. So after you've run the first task in this pipeline of bubbling up, you now have a Bosch director and the underlying CF infrastructure necessary for you to now deploy CF using CF deployment. So as I mentioned previously, CF deployment is a repository that houses the new base manifest for deploying a Cloud Foundry. Um, and CF deployment provides several benefits for you as a user. The first being that it really emphasizes human readability. So making sure that there's a good user experience. Um, the second is that CF deployment is on the bleeding edge. So a lot of other teams across Cloud Foundry may be working on new features, new products, something that's experimental. And by using CF deployment, you're able to have early access to these features, to try them out, test them out, see if it's something that you want to use in the future. Another major benefit is on security. So CF deployment turns on all system components that can utilize TLS to have TLS on by default. Um, so the out of the box solution for a CF here is going to be a secure Cloud Foundry. And last but not least, while CF deployment isn't necessarily ready for production use, it is geared for production. Um, and this you can see in two ways. First, that they make sure that all the components um, that should be HA are highly available. And secondly, that um, different components are streaked across multiple availability zones. So you might be wondering how exactly CF deployment is able to have all of these benefits for you as a user. Um, and so under the hood, um, it's, or in, it's using a lot of Bosch 2.0 features in order to provide the human readability and other aspects. So for example, one of the ways that it optimizes for human readability and the user experience is by having a static main manifest. And the reason it's able to have a static main manifest is due to the cloud config, ops file, and var store. Um, Christian has already talked about the cloud config, but we'll dive a little bit deeper into the other two and how they work with CF deployment. So first, in the case of ops files, ops files are YAML files that house some configuration that you as a user may want to apply to your Cloud Foundry. So for example, an ops file looks something like this with a type. Um, so in this case, we want to replace the value at this path. Um, so we want to bump up the number of our cells to a value of five. And so you can take this ops file and you can apply it to the base manifest, which presumably has some other value maybe it has an instance count of two. And by applying this ops file to it, you'll end up with a Cloud Foundry that has five instances. And so the value here is ops files allow you to compartmentalize um, configurations into different ops files, which makes it easier for a user to understand what exactly they're applying to their CF and what exactly they're modifying. So for example, you could have an ops file called instance count overrides that will just change the values for different instances in your deployment. You could also have an ops file for switching out a database usage, or you have an ops file to enable TCP routing. So there are multiple different ops files that you can use, and then as an operator, I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm applying these ops files to my Cloud Foundry and I can expect what feature set comes out because they're well named and well compartmentalized. The other major benefit um, in CF deployment with Bosch 2.0 is the idea of a VAR store. So the VAR store is a file that hosts all of your secrets for your deployment in one, in one file. So A, it optimizes for you as a user to know exactly where your secrets are being held. Um, because in the past, you might have had something like a database set here, and your password, maybe you were lazy, maybe you wrote admin, hopefully you didn't, hopefully you stored it somewhere else, but then you still had to make sure that you took that value and put it into the manifest um, when you deploy. So you might have used some tool like spiff that's really hard to get right. Um, but luckily, with a var store, you can now use a new syntax um, of double parentheses, and then give a name for the secret value that you want to access. And that name, the in this case, the Diego DB password, is going to map to an item in your var store file. Um, and then when you deploy, it will make sure that that value for the password is being applied correctly. 
Another added benefit is if I added this to my manifest, so I didn't actually have a Diego DB password in my VAR store. When I deploy my CF, it'll actually add an entry called Diego DB password, and then we'll have a randomly generated secure password in place. And this is great because, again, it goes hand in hand with the idea of making every single system component that needs mutual TLS to be able to have that turned on by default. Because you as a user now no longer have to go and configure all the certs and keys and make sure that they're all correct because Bosch will be taking care of that for you. Um, so that also optimizes for you as a user. So to now use CF deployment to deploy your CF, all you have to do is a Bosch deploy with the path to the main base um, deployment file, and then any additional ops files you may have, and your VAR store. And with that, you now have a Cloud Foundry that's ready for you as a user to use and deploy apps to. Cool, and uh, for those of you who want to use Concourse, uh, Bubble also supports Concourse, so you'll be able to bubble up, uh, do a bubble create OBS type Concourse, and have uh, basically an environment ready for you to do a Bosch deploy concourse um, easily. So you might be curious about how people are using these tools today. Um, so here's one example of a real world use case um, from the team I'm currently working on, the container networking team. Um, and so in this case, we have an environment called Pickle Helm, which is the name of a hat. Um, and you have a Pickle Helm bubble up, so that will create your Pickle Helm Bosch director. And then you have a deploy, which will create your C Cloud Foundry um, before running our acceptance tests against that um, Cloud Foundry installation. Additionally, you can also have a delete Pickle Helm deployment um, to get rid of it when we're not actually using the Cloud Foundry for testing, saving us money um, by getting rid of idle VMs. Great, and um, I wanted to touch a bit on future plans that we have for some of these tools. Um, so first is bubble jump boxes. If you remember back from that first diagram I showed of putting Bosch in a public subnet, um, most people probably want, won't want to do that. So uh, the idea here is that we would uh, put a jump box into the public subnet and put your Bosch into a part, uh, the internal subnet, and then you would just use uh, the Bosch CLI to uh, tunnel through the jump box to your Bosch director. Second is um, CredHub support for Bubble. Um, so you might have heard of CredHub, but if you haven't, it's a credential store that um, can be essentially stored onto your Bosch director. Um, so you can do a Bosch deploy uh, and have variables stored uh, in CredHub rather than in a file. Um, so this would just be adding support for that. Um, we're also looking at adding Azure support for Bubble alongside AWS and GCP. Um, and lastly, we're th um, looking at creating a Bubble Lite, which um, if you're you know, testing Cloud Foundry, you might not want to spin up you know, the 30 or so VMs that Cloud Foundry requires. Um, so Bubble Lite would create containers on the VM it's on rather than creating VMs in your IaaS. And also, uh, the Relin team is also working on a migration path for CF release to CF deployment for those of you who are stuck on CF release and want to move on to CF deployment. Yeah, and with that, if you want to take a deeper dive into any of the tools that we discussed here today, we have links to the GitHub repositories for all of them. We also have an additional GitHub repository listed here called CF deployment concourse tasks in case you want to stand up your own concourse CI and have any of the tasks we showed in the pipelines here today. Um, and lastly, you can always reach out to the teams who are maintaining these tools on the Cloud Foundry Slack. Um, and with that, um, thank you. And does anyone have any questions? Yep. So you mentioned that Bubble is idempotent. So how does Bubble know about the infrastructure that it currently deployed, and how does it keep track of that? So under the hood, we, we use Terraform, which um, does a lot of the work for us, so we don't have to think about it. Um, so if you haven't used Terraform, uh, it could essentially look at your existing infrastructure and bring it in line with whatever template um, that exists so that you could uh, 
always maintain your infrastructure. Yes? Yeah, so um, we, we are talking about vSphere, although I don't know if we're going to do it anytime uh, soon. So again, we use Terraform, and Terraform doesn't currently support vSphere, so it's a, a little bit of a harder problem. Yes? Um, nothing's preventing it. Uh, so we're also talking about that. I don't know if we're going to do it anytime soon. Uh, Evan, our PM, is actually here if he wants to speak uh, about yeah, it. We're looking at OpenStack. We haven't done any progress on it. With Azure, we're actually like signing up for the accounts and starting the pipelines for that. But with OpenStack, that'll probably be next. Yeah. But also, we, we appreciate the feedback if you want to like jump in our Slack or our GitHub page. Um, and we also accept PRs. Yes? Is this going to be the de facto way to deploy CF? Uh, right now, yeah, we, we want it to be the de facto way to deploy CF. Although Bubble won't fit every use case because it is highly opinionated. Um, so in those cases, you would just use Bosch uh, deployment directly and whatever infrastructure you need. Yeah, so basically CF deployment will be the default way going forward um, in terms of like trying to stand up your CF. but. Bubble is really just for people who might want an ephemeral director for like their pipeline, say, something more automatable and repeatable. Um, so it's definitely not for like a power user. Yeah, right now it's, it's not production ready, but we are aiming to get Bubble production ready and um, you know get more use cases in. Right now it, it is uh, kind of targeted towards our core uh, open source Cloud Foundry teams using it in their pipelines. Uh, but we are um, looking at ways we could get more users using it. Yeah. So if I want to use Bubble, how can I install that on my machine? What's an easy way to get Bubble? Sure, we should have added that to the slides. But um, So it's part of the Cloud Foundry tab if you're using a Mac. So you could do uh, brew install uh, Cloud Foundry slash Bubble. Um, otherwise, you can just download it from the GitHub releases page. We currently support Linux and Mac. Awesome. Thank you again.